there is an African proverb that says, until the lion learns to tell its story, the tale of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. Unfortunately for you and me, the lion in that proverb refers to you and me. On the other hand, the hunter refers to our competitors, the people that don't want us to succeed, the people that want us to fail, who would rather eat our dinner and our lunch and yes, our breakfast. Hi, I am Dr. Gideon Fumukwai Fumukwai, the story warrior. I help small business owners tell fascinating stories, tell transformational stories that ignite interest and generate business. I wish I could tell you that I was born with a special gift for storytelling. Not at all. Even though I grew up in a community that was steeped in various forms of storytelling, I initially resented storytelling and never thought it was something that is worthwhile. I never thought it was something that was worth my time. It took me a very, very long time to discover the power, to discover the potency of storytelling. Today, I want to share with you five mistakes that I see coaches, trainers, business owners make in the course of growing their businesses with storytelling. I want to share with you not only about these mistakes, but also ways, five different ways in which you can improve these mistakes so that you can grow your business. You can generate buzz. You can generate interest. You can generate leads from being a memorable, a credible, and a relatable presenter or business person. How did I figure it out? It was all by sheer luck. In November 2003, I bought my first book on storytelling. Because I did so badly at a speech competition, someone pulled me to the side and said, if you want to do well in the world of speaking, coaching, and growing your business, you had better be good at storytelling. So I bought my first book. It was a good book, but I did not fully believe in the power of storytelling at the time. Until I went to Toronto, Canada in the year 2005. And I did so badly, so badly, that I told myself, if I had been paid for that gig, I would have returned the check. Here's what happened. I went from Singapore to Toronto, Canada to speak at a World Conference on Disaster Management about the avian flu in Asia. And Toronto, from my own perspective, was supposed to be a breakthrough presentation for me. But know what happened? It turned out to be a breakdown. Toronto was supposed to be a transformational moment, a milestone for me, but I single-handedly turned it into a meltdown. Needless to say, Toronto was supposed to be a day when I could say I triumphed professionally but I turned it into a tragedy. So I tend to talk about my Toronto tragedy because it turned out to be tragic, but it spurred me to go forward and learn. And it is thanks to the fact that I failed so badly in front of 300 people in Toronto that I decided to recommit myself to learning about the power of storytelling. That ability has enabled me to speak in more than 20 countries. It has also given me the opportunity to speak in well over 34 states across America. And more importantly, it has allowed me to be able to generate well over 70% of my business from referrals. And sometimes I'll get business locally and internationally through people who have heard about my work. And this is something that I believe it can be helpful to you. I never thought I'll go to countries like Iraq Never thought I'd go to countries like United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi, Brunei Darussalam, Hong Kong, China. As a little boy growing up in Africa, I never dreamt about all of that. But all of that has come to happen to me thanks to the power 
of storytelling. Thanks to people who have heard me. And four or five years later, they will say, I remember what you said in Jakarta, Indonesia. I remember what you said. That's why I sent this person over to you. So today, I want to share with you those five mistakes and how you can ameliorate the situation. But before we jump right in, I want to say this skill, this power of storytelling is something that can transform your life. And that's why I am very committed to helping business owners tell transformational stories that ignite interest and generate business. And I want to invite you on this journey with me. Before I jump into the first important mistake that speakers, trainers, business owners, and coaches are making in growing their businesses with story, I want to say there are two important lessons I learned from Toronto. Number one, if you can't tell your story, nobody else will do that for you. If you can't tell your story, nobody will do that for you. So first things first, you must be capable of telling your story. Number two, it's not enough to be a lion. It's not enough to be the king of the jungle. You must be able to share your story because when you're able to do that, you would be able to let the entire jungle know that the hunter is just a loud mouth. The hunter has no leverage over you. You are better than the hunter. You're stronger than the hunter. You have spent many years learning your skill, learning your craft. So don't let anybody take advantage of you. Be the very best that you can. If you can build buzz with your story, you would surely generate business. If you can build buzz with your story, you can generate business. So the first mistake that I see coaches and business owners make is announcing the story before they tell it. Do not announce a story unless you're speaking to first graders, second graders, third graders, or fourth graders. Anyone beyond that age group, please do not announce story. Just jump right in. The reason is that we have been conditioned over the years to think that story is not very important. Unfortunately, our school system has not done a good job in that area. So the best thing to do is sneak it right in. By saying, for example, recently I had an experience. Remember, I didn't use the word story. I use the word experience. And you jump right in and tell the story. Alternatively, you could also talk about, can you believe? Have you heard about? When you say, can you believe X, Y, Z? You jump in with their permission to tell the story. Or... You simply say, have you heard about? And when the person acknowledges that they've not heard about it, then you jump in to tell your story. That allows them to consume the story without even knowing that they are enjoying a fine, carefully crafted story that you want to share with them. Number two, the second mistake I see coaches, business owners make in the course of sharing their stories on the cause of growing their business with story is that they often tell bland and boring stories. Please, whatever you do, don't be boring. Don't be bland. Why? Because if you are not interesting, if you're not able to create curiosity, you're not giving enough of a good reason for someone to hire you or to listen to you. So you have to find different tools and techniques to be interesting, to be exciting, to be fascinating in the course of telling your stories. So don't be dull. How can you do that? You can have what I call a powerful, inciting incident. An incident that shows the stakes. An incident that demonstrates conflict. So share a story that has something at stake. What was at stake? Toronto was supposed to be a breakthrough, but it became a breakdown. Why? It creates a sense of wonder. 
And that intrigue is what is going to get the listener to pay attention. And I will share with you at the very end of today why it's important to create intrigue. The next thing I want to share, the next third mistake that I see presenters, I see business owners and coaches make this mistake very often is that they do what I call cosmetic telling. What do I mean by cosmetic telling or cosmetic fallacy? By cosmetic telling, they are sharing stories that are so cliched, stories that everyone has heard about, stories that you get from the internet. Those kind of stories are not memorable. They are not helpful to your business because they belong to someone else. They don't belong to you. So how can you fix that? Share stories about yourself, about your own personal journey. Share stories about you because such stories are credible. Stories about you are relatable. And last but not least, stories about you tend to be memorable because you would be able to put in specific details that are unique to you. And so when people think about you, they think about the experiences that you shared, they would be able to remember what you talk about. And if they can remember it, they can share it with others. If they can share with others, then chances are that others would want to come to you to get your help about this area of expertise that you've come to master. The fourth mistake that I see coaches, business owners make in the course of sharing their stories is that they very often tell the story in ways that are drifting and dodgy. They jump from here to there. They jump from A to Z without showing us how they progress through B, C, D, E, and so on and so forth. So it is incumbent on you as a storyteller, as a business owner, to be coherent. Instead of jumping or drifting and uh, telling it in a way that is not coherent, think about a sequence. That doesn't mean that you can't start at the end. It's okay if you want to start the story at the end, but just make sure that you acknowledge that you had skipped and help your audience to see that there's some details that you had omitted and help them to fill in those, uh, fill in those gaps and have a full understanding, a full breadth of what you are speaking about. So sequence is very important in storytelling. The last mistake that I see a lot of speakers make has to do with egocentric telling. By egocentric telling, I mean that they're telling stories in ways that are so centered on themselves. It's about you. But the fact of the matter is, the story, even though it may be about you, the lesson from it should not be about you. It should be a universal lesson. It should be a, 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 a virtue, a value that you want to share with, with the world. And you can't be the hero of your story. How can you ameliorate that? Look at one of the characters within the story. Make them the hero. It could be a little child. It could be an object. It could be a, a, a circumstance that taught you something important. Make that person, make that individual the object or the hero of your story. So in essence, there are five Mistakes that I see speakers make, presenters, business owners. The first one is announcing the story. Please don't do that. Second one is telling stories that are boring and bland. Cosmetic telling, uh, drifting and dodgy details. And last but not least, egocentric telling. If you can avoid these mistakes, I guarantee you that you'll be considered credible, memorable, and highly relatable and that generates buzz that generates interest and that goes a long way in helping you to be considered someone that's highly credible and to whom business can be accorded thank you once again this is dr gideon from Ukwai from Ukwai, the story warrior who helps business owners to tell transformational stories that ignite interest and generate business thank you <music> 
started by sharing with you an African proverb that says, until the lion learns to tell its story, the tale of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. I understood that I had to be that lion who is capable of telling his story. Otherwise, the hunter will always have the best of me. So my question to you is, do you want to be that lion who is capable of telling your story so that the hunter doesn't return to the village and have the best of you by telling everybody that they are stronger than you? After all, you are the lion, the king of the jungle. Why do I say that? Because you've spent a lot of time in your professional field. You've spent many years learning, acquiring that skill, which you know not everyone is as good as you. But unless you are able to articulate that, unless you are able to tell the world what you're capable of doing, nobody will believe you and you would still die hungry. Are you willing to generate well over 80 to 90% of leads from your speaking engagements, whether in person or virtually? Are you looking at growing your business by generating enough buzz so that you can get well over 70% of referrals to grow your business through those with whom you have interacted? Are you looking at being a transformational business person who is able to tell transformational stories to generate interest and in business? If that's what you're looking to do, then I want to invite you to consider what I did after Toronto. After I failed so badly in Toronto, I did a postmortem, and I realized that I needed help. Fortunately for me, when I returned to Singapore, I received a professional speaker's magazine that talked about a lady in Louisiana, Miss Gatz, who was a story coach. And I reached out to her to seek help because Toronto was so bad. And I did not want the second presentation on the same topic in Phoenix, Arizona to be so bad. So I called her up from Asia. I said, I just returned from Toronto where I started and stumbled literally on stage. And I never want that to happen again. In the course of helping me to do the postmortem, she asked me, Gideon, what kind of stories did you use in the course of sharing your message in Toronto, Canada? And very dismissively, I said, I didn't use any stories. And the silence was long. But when she got back to me, she said, listen, young man, remember this. Stories are the lifeblood of a conversation. Stories are the lifeblood of of a conversation. So whether you're talking one-on-one, -on -one, whether you're coaching a group, a large group, remember that stories are the lifeblood of that conversation. It is the one thing that people would take away. So I went on to get help from Miss Gatz and she coached me for well over six weeks over the phone. That was way back in 2005. And back and forth, we went. I sent her my script. She sent me back corrections. I sent her my script. She sent back more corrections. And after going through that for well over a period of six weeks, I had a succinct presentation to take to Toronto, to take beyond Toronto. I took it to Phoenix, Arizona in November of 2005. And when I got to, fin when I got to Phoenix, finally, my presentation took off. I can tell you this. There was no coffee lady in the room that day, but had it been there was one, she would have served me a lot of coffee. In Toronto, she didn't even want to make eye contact with me. But in Phoenix, I had another bowl in which I invited my attendees to drop in business cards. And it was packed full of business cards. It even generated business for me. And I will say this, four years after Toronto, after, after Phoenix, while attending graduate school in Nevada, I ran into someone who had been at the conference in Phoenix. And after several meetings with him, he discovered I was a guy that spoke in Phoenix. And he was able to remember several details from the stories that I shared in Phoenix. He asked me, are you the guy who once came from Singapore to speak in Phoenix, Arizona? 
I said, yes, sir. He asked me, are you the guy who told us a story about how avian flu started in Asia? I said, yes, sir. He said, are you the guy who told us a story about avian flu, specifically a young man in Vietnam, and so on and so forth? He asked me, and I said, yes, sir. This was well over four to five years later. What he did on that day in Reno, Nevada, I will never forget. He asked me, can I have that piece of paper back? That was a contract that he had signed with me for 13 weeks of internship. He took it and crossed it out. And it doubled my hourly rate. Before I went out, he said, so, hmm, so you've been around for quite some time. Doing good work to those who are looking to grow. That was the best compliment that I could ever get. Even though it was several years after I stumbled in Toronto, it reminded me of the importance of the power of deciding or being willing to redouble your efforts to learn a skill that is transformational. So I want to invite you. Do you want to grow your business? Do you want to generate buzz? Do you want people to talk about you? Do you want people to give you a second opportunity, double your fee, or just simply recognize you as a genuine good human being? One skill you need is storytelling. Business storytelling is a transformational skill. And I would not share this with you if it did not change my life. It has changed my life and I hope it can change yours. So I'm inviting you to join me on this journey of learning, talking, sharing about the power of storytelling. You just benefited a little piece of what I've been able to learn, but there's a whole lot more. The art, the science of storytelling, how the hormones get to change in the course of telling a story. I wanna invite you to continue learning with me, but more importantly, I wanna say thank you for your time. Once again, this is Dr. Gideon Fumukwai Fumukwai, the story warrior inviting you to come on this journey of telling transformational stories that ignite interest and generate business come along with me thank you i look forward to having you on this journey with me thank you